Hey yo, this is May. Welcome back to this side of the world. Today we're introducing Photography with Friends, episode number three, with Eric, Alex, and Dennis. Um, so it's been quite a while since I made a video, like I say every single time. And uh, this podcast was on the back burner for quite a while as well. I actually filmed this in September of 2023, and now I'm finally editing it in February 2024. And at the end of February as well. So that's about like five months of not even looking at this uh, project. And I apologize to myself, and I apologize to... Uh, my participants. Hopefully this will be uploaded by March of 2024 and not like 2026. But uh, lately I've just been feeling kind of down on my inspiration and motivation I guess on making content whether it just be photos or videos. Um, just trying to get out of the rut and just start doing things rather than thinking about all of the goals that I want to achieve and all the creative things I want to do for this year and uh, just keep doing instead of thinking so much. In this podcast, we have a lovely group, so I'm going to introduce them right now before we get right into the podcast and talking about shenanigans and ramblings about photography. Dennis Lee, Alex Tchaikovsky, and Eric Newcomb. Dennis is a hobbyist photographer who enjoys camping out in the mountains. Mesmerized by the starry skies to engage with the bustle of the city streets, he takes care in his framing and likes to capture the authenticity of his surroundings. Alex is talented not only in noticing the solace and isolation of the city that is often overlooked by others, but is a great musician as well. You might see his photos as an album cover for one of his hits one day, wink wink. Eric is an avid cyclist that won't let a bike ride stop him from taking beautiful landscapes and wildlife photos along the way. He tends to like to focus on the details of the subject matter and grasp the story of the subject in question. So please enjoy the podcast! Hello. Yes. You're there. You're there. <laughs> You're there. <laughs> Uh, hello, May here. Welcome back to this side of the world. This is Photography with Friends. Episode 3. Today we're joined with three exciting new photographer friends and this very cool space that we have to ourselves um, to scream and yell in called the Alcove. Yes. Ooh, that's the yelling. <laughs> so I'm going to throw it over to Dennis to talk about this very unique space and what it's all about. Uh, yeah, so we're at the Alco Center for the Arts. Uh, this is a recreational art space. So essentially, it's like a community space where we cultivate art and creativity. So we provide like free art supplies, uh, instruments, uh, and just different equipment that people can use when they come visit for free. Um, and it's really just to encourage them to get inspired and to create things. Um, we also do like workshops and events, which are all pay what you can to just get the community to come together through like, uh, yeah, like creative activities. And yeah, that's kind of um, what we do here. <laughs> yeah, when I first came here for the photo walk, it was a really cozy space and very mm -hmm. friendly and welcoming. And it was cool to see everyone like from different diverse cities come in and just like hang out. Mm -hmm. So I think Calvary definitely needs something like this, like a space. So I was like, yes, this is definitely what I was looking for and nice. get more people to come in mm -hmm. and like discover the space too. So yeah, thanks for starting it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's uh, I'm one of the co-founders with uh, Bethel Athletic. She's one of the other co-founders. Um, and yeah, the photography is one of the many things that we do. Um, and even just like the photo walk, that's uh, it, it's, it kind of shows like how important space is. Because technically a photo walk, you don't really need a space to congregate. But even just having that really, I think, makes it easier and more accessible for people um, and just encourages more kind of spontaneous interactions. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, even for things where you don't necessarily need like a physical space, it still adds that benefit. So mm -hmm. to add that could kind of like help that community really build. Yeah, definitely like creates that community space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Dennis. Um, so we'll all leave a link to the description <laughs> yeah, for, sure. for the alcove and uh, pop in any time, people of Calgary. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I was just took a photo of us. <laughs> cool. And let's welcome everyone. Welcome, Alex. Dennis and Eric. Thanks for having us. Welcome. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Yeah, 
Well, how are you guys feeling today? Good. Good. Yeah. We're something on a podcast for you. Yeah, same here. Yeah. I've done something like this before, so it's not my first. Mm-hmm. Why yeah. did you guys agree to this podcast? I've never done one before. Mm-hmm. You guys will get out of your comfort zone at some point. Yeah, that yeah, sounds fun. I mean, some other photographers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. yeah, I feel like May is like a really, like, like a focal point for a lot of photographers oh, yeah. here in college. She's the glue. Not only photographers, but like people just in general. Yeah, true. I'm trying because when I was in Toronto, I just loved the community that was in there. Like photographers hanging out, talking about everything, making friends, connecting with one another. Then like coming to Calgary, like it was very difficult to make friends in the beginning. Mm. So I wanted to, you know, make the effort to find people. Because I had to make the effort in Calgary. It's a smaller city, a little, a little more spoiled in Toronto. Because you can just like easily connect with someone. But here, like, you have to look, you know. But there's people here. Made it easy for me to find people. Yeah. <laughs> just, How did you find it? Uh, I was at the SoCal event, the, uh, mm-hmm. the one at McMahon Stadium. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, anyways, I can't remember who mm-hmm. actually had to be the group chat. But I got that to the group chat after that. Mm-hmm. Start showing up before the walks like that. So mm-hmm. it's easy when you don't have to put the effort. So thank you, Mae, for yeah, doing no problem. all the ground work on all of that. Yeah, that's the thing, because a lot of photographers don't know that they can start something like this or mm-hmm. like, you know, want to make the effort and lead kind of thing. So it's a lot of effort though. It is a lot of effort. And like, a lot of stress. It's almost like a part-time job. Like for yeah. me, because I'm like responding to messages and like mm-hmm. keeping up to date with like walks and things. But and I even organizing that for the shoot night for the shoot that we had. Yeah, I didn't really know how to organize properly. Oh, having like four models, five models, and then everyone was just crowding one model. So it's like, okay, come on, let's. We, we have four other models, so let's separate into different locations, and maybe you can come over here. There's still like ten photographers on one model. Just have a better look or something. <laughs> Interesting, but. I was just like the starting point, I guess. So people were like, oh, there's a model. Let's take, set up the lights and everything. And they start taking pictures of her. But there's like four other models. So eventually people kind of like, you know, yeah. spread out. Yeah. And then oh, we're able. the industrial one? Yeah, this um, industrial one. That was really fun. It was really fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do another one for sure. Because that was fun. Yeah, even tomorrow's going to walk in. I can't think. Oh, there's. So many being planned, and it seems yeah. like some people are starting to branch off and posting mm-hmm. their own as well, which is good. Mm-hmm. Get then you're not doing all the work that I'm presenting yourself. Yeah, point. exactly. Like, I got some people in the group that are starting to do road trips and then organizing them, and then they're organizing their own like walks. If, like, oh, I'm in the city, you guys want to take a walk? And yeah, it takes the pressure off of me, and also getting more people connected. Yeah. yeah. I feel like graduating, you know, from the, <laughs> from the, from the school, from my school. <laughs> and just doing their own thing. Yeah. And I like to see that. So I always wanted to make this like group free for people too, because some people like to charge like crazy amounts of money for it oh, too. Really? Yeah. So there's one called the Calgary Photography Club. Um, and you have to pay like 30 bucks to go on like one walk or something, or as you have to get a membership. So I don't know. It's like accessible to everyone. So I want to keep it more like casual. But yeah. You still need to create like a page for, um, for donation. Like if people <laughs> want to. Maybe like so like Not like, like obligatory thing. Uh, yeah, like, Alcove, they have donation based because the facilitators like you know you want to pay facilitators so more people can come in right and keep the the walks going. We can't because again you you spending a lot of time on this. Mm. And like, well, think about it. Patreon, <laughs> Patreon, Ex- exclusive we content. Of, we could get some of the walks for us. Mm. So. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. Something to mm. think about. Yeah, but um, mm. yeah, I mean, like our photo stuff. Like we really just started it. I think just beginning of summer, so July. I think was the first one that we did. Mm. And then we we did two. Or was it August? I don't remember exactly. It was in the mm. summertime that we like kind of. Um, like we've done photo photography workshops in the past, mm. but in the last like few months, um, I kind of took a more interest so I, because I'm like more involved with the organization. I was mm. just like, I'll just do like I started off with critique things, mm. and then that was like a good um, met some good people. Then 
Um, but then we found that like the critique nights kind of like may be intimidating. Mm. And it also is like how that it work because you always mm. like, you have to come prepared with photos and that yeah. just like that itself might be some work for people mm. to do. So we're changing it to just kind of make it more like social like yeah. meetups. More so casual, I actually yeah. wanted to talk to you about that. Mm. Just kind of like because uh, we have one coming up and I don't really have anything planned. <laughs> 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 but I thought maybe even, I don't know, like we have one of those like printers that mm. you like connect with your phone. Maybe I thought we could do like mm. print and trade or something. I don't know, like something like anything just to kind of um Make it fun and just a social mm-hmm. to like you know be a photographer because it is a very like mm-hmm. solo and lonely yeah. kind of art. I think. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, I definitely want to talk to you about kind of like how we can kind of collaborate. Yeah, sure. Because um, we're doing a lot of similar stuff, but I find um, well, I, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do mm-hmm. think that like the the group that you have going, it is a little bit more kind of more practicing photographers, or like it's mm-hmm. a good range. But mm-hmm. you do seem to have a more like these meetups like the studio one that is more like you don't really have someone there to like teach others to show because others people kind of know what they're doing mm-hmm. yeah. versus what we're doing it is a bit more to get people involved so yeah. actually like i find almost like half the people that have come to our walk so far have uh, don't even have like an actual camera yeah they, they just come with a phone um so like, and that's why we do a like, guided photo walk so mm-hmm. like daniel um he's a facilitator he's actually used to teach at like most of the institutions doing photography so um, so we're still kind of like bouncing that because I do find it is a little tough sometimes when you're out on the street because people are like all over the place and you're trying to like teach a group or like to even just give the exercise but then either you're scattered or you're outside and it's loud so but like we still try to have the element of like um, getting people involved like if they're if they weren't before like encouraging people to yeah. get more involved maybe they'll buy a camera because of these events and we've had some of those people come back um twice like the ones with just a phone so mm-hmm. so i think that's where it's a little different but i still think there's a lot of like, synergy where we could you know yeah cooperate we could and, merge into it because yeah. our group isn't like open to anyone yeah. like some people feel really like uh cautious about their photography mm-hmm. skills or it's like oh it just started out and it's mm-hmm. like don't worry you can come with a phone or don't even come with a, like anything really just just come and hang out kind of thing yeah. it's yeah. like everyone's learning even the professional people in our group but definitely, I think it's a little more like people who are practicing photography as yeah. a ho- like a beyond a hobby. Totally. Like there's a higher percentage of us in there, but yeah. there's also like people who are just starting out and like want to learn and don't know what they're doing. So that's yeah. that's mm-hmm. fine. We're welcoming to everyone. And that's the thing about photography. I think it's just like there shouldn't be judgments. No, definitely. Yeah. Like I think it definitely can be very intimidating when you're first starting to come into like a group though, because like. You're coming in, yeah. like you literally have no idea what your skill level is. Like you're just like, I think, like for me, I started doing photos during the pandemic, so it's like, oh, like I like taking photos of this. <laughs> like I'll take it. Like I ended up buying a camera, like maybe six thousand, and like, getting into it that way. Um, but like luckily, through my university, like Carleton and Ottawa, um, there was a photography club there, so like it was like a nice little intro. Because like when you're a student and everyone's a student, it's a lot easier than like yeah. going into a group where you don't know anything. Yeah. Like, so that's why Alcove, like one of the reasons why we found Alcove is we found like when we were university students when we first talked about the idea mm-hmm. and like we were like we had like club spaces and rooms there and we were thinking like you know once we're like outside university or like our friends outside they can't like necessarily come here they don't have places to go so like you know at Carlton or university you can find those clubs very easily I think it is a lot more accessible yeah. I do think they're probably less intimidating than like um like non school affiliated clubs perhaps yeah so i think we wanted to create that kind of place that's like off outside of like universities and colleges yeah. and mm-hmm. stuff like that so even someone that's like middle aged if they just try to get into it yeah. and they're not a college student or whatever mm-hmm. but maybe they just want to get into camera or even people who just maybe like it's not about like um necessarily being a hobby or maybe they just want to start they want to be able to take better photos of like their friends and family because mm-hmm. people always ask them to do it so it's not even like that they necessarily have interest in photography, but yeah. they just, you know, so if you want to like be kind of welcoming to like all of those intentions. Yeah. And then it'd be really cool if like, you know, those people who actually really, you know, develop those skills want to take it more seriously. And mm-hmm. then there's like another community where like you run, mm-hmm. where they can almost like level up and like kind of funnel mm-hmm. into those different, um, uh, different groups where it's like appropriate to their skill level and their interest level. So yeah. like, I think that's like, we're trying to build that kind of ecosystem here in mm-hmm. Calgary, I think where people can find like people who are at their at their level and also when they want to advance yeah still find others that they can still like be mm-hmm. around and absorb that knowledge yeah i think the alcohol is good for that 
it's just like welcoming and like no judgments for that as well. And you can just, like you said, funnel it into like a more professional thing afterwards. And, or if you don't, that's fine too. Yeah. Yeah. Could be just a hobby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just like pe- more people like talking about their passions and like taking, liking taking photos or whatnot. It's, it's almost mm-hmm. like contagious. So then you start oh, to be like, inspired. yeah, you get inspired. You're like, oh, maybe I can actually be more serious about it too. And you know. Yeah. Oh, it's great to see the, the world from a different perspective as well. Mm-hmm. Every single person has a different idea of photography and whether it means different. So yeah. It's always good to see something else in the world because you can be inspired by it easily. Just like, oh, I've never thought of seeing the world that way or like, mm-hmm. or that lens combo with that specific <laughs> location or whatever. It's just like, wow, it's, yeah. it's interesting. It's here with the human eye. But... Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's nice to like share photos. Oh, like yeah. when we go on a photo walk, everyone shares photos, like, oh, I suppose I didn't see that from that angle yeah. and like see everyone's style come out too. Even like on a photo walk, so you just see someone taking a picture and you're like, what are they yeah, saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't see what you're seeing, yeah. but I'm curious now. <laughs> Sometimes you even do this, like maybe through the lens, <laughs> but yeah, it's fun to see how other people see. That's very philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like, I don't know, thinking about like those projects, like they do that in um, rehabilitation centers or like in prisons, they give them cameras and then see what they see or give them like to the kids and then see what they see. It's very interesting. Oh, do you want to do this? Yeah. God, that's a lot of bugs for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. They probably just take pictures of bugs. Bugs and rocks. Oh, yeah, they do, right? mm. Or whatever catches their eye. I don't think you can ever tell exactly what a kid's going to do. That's yeah, true. But, but I think to a certain point it's the same, but then they kind of realize it's the same. Mm. So they maybe switch their focus on something different, mm. which well, they can see the world also different. Mm. That's, that's yeah. what's great about photography as well. Like yeah. you, you keep taking the same photos because, I mean, you like it and you enjoy it, but then you Got to start a point that you have to take something different, do something different. Yeah. And that makes you grow, actually. So yeah. that's beauty of photography. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I used to travel and like I have so many photos of like that like millions of other people have the exact same photos <laughs> at home on their computers, you know, at their homes. And it's just like I think that was like one of those like, yeah, like you said, like you kind of realize like no i want to start taking like more unique like yeah. i think that's a bit more like unique to myself rather than just like, all my experience you can see me everyone else's experience mm-hmm. taking the same thing seeing the same thing so, so i think that's like one lesson is that you really decide to take less photos yeah but it's like oh like, is this worth thinking <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> this is just something that i see that it's like yeah. is it visually appealing like maybe but but is it worth like taking a photo of that i feel like i'm more often saying like no i don't think we should just see it. There are also like certain expectations of you taking photos and f- certain expectations from the location where you you're now. For example, I, I was in Paris and I didn't take picture of Eiffel Tower. I did not. <laughs> so I sent I, so I sent just random buildings and like and people like, so you're in Paris? I'm like, yeah, where's the Eiffel Tower? I'm like, bro. <laughs> there is so much more to Paris than just yeah. Eiffel Tower. So it's silly, but people do have s- like certain expectations of certain location. So it's very good to explore and just be free from, from the, these boundaries and stereotypes, whatever. You just take a photo, take it at the same time. You want to tell us where you're? <laughs> yeah, for context, um, on my personal Instagram, I keep tagging the Calgary Tower as the CN Tower, which is kind of a rise of all my Ontario friends. So, we're talking about a photo show. <laughs> started recording. Yeah. And then when I went back to Toronto, I tagged the CN Tower as the Calgary Tower. He lost some savage on it, apparently. But, uh, it's very patriotic. <laughs> I was working with my American friends, thought I was serious, and like, oh, I'll be in Toronto the next week. I'm actually in Calgary. That's funny. 
Yeah, there's a surprising amount of uh, like the needle style towers though. In Seattle. Yeah, yeah. Seattle has mm-hmm. one. Like in Niagara Niagara Falls, there's uh, a yeah. Skyline Tower. Um, Singapore. Sure. They have their big round tower. Yeah. I think almost every metropolitan city has that Does kind of tower. Does New York have? Kind of like that. Um, I think, well, they were for, I believe, I'm not 100 sure on this. I thought it was for train communications. So, like, uh, that's originally what they were built for, so that they could just get like long distance. Uh, oh, okay. so like, mm-hmm. obviously not now in Calgary because like the entire skyline is built around it. There's towers that are taller than it, but like Toronto is massive. Mm-hmm. Like that's why it's the CN Towers, like by CN, mm-hmm. the company. Oh, um, but uh, yeah, but I'm pretty sure. In New York, they would have just used the Empire State Building for that. Yeah. So that's why they probably didn't need it. But yeah, I think Twin Towers, Towers Husky, I think, or at least the ones who built it, but I could be totally wrong. Husky? Yeah. Oh, it's a gas company? Yeah, but I could be totally wrong. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Does Vancouver have one? I th- think they do. Yeah, Vancouver Tower. <laughs> it'll be where like the top of it is round kind of like the top yeah. tower but it's wider but it's on like a like a rectangular building oh okay so it is kind of like a spaceship like, yeah what's not like <laughs> towers like the spire but it's like a regular building and then on top there's like that round round piece okay like, it's kind of weird so people uh-huh. can actually go in it yeah too? there's an observatory is it yeah spin oh no, I don't think so. It's like a lot of them spin. Right? Yeah, well, I think they just add yeah, those <laughs> uh, restaurants in after the fact. So like, well, what else can we do? <laughs> Let's spin. <laughs> Let it spin. Well, the one in Vegas is really cool. Up there, so yeah. Uh, yeah. What's cool about it? It's really tall. <laughs> okay. It's one of the tallest. Like, it's one of the tallest buildings. I think. Yeah. Oh, in the world, or I think so. Or like in the U.S. I don't remember, but it's like they were showing stuff. It's amazing. Oh. Pretty tall. It's like really nice for me to see what it is. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just like, what did you see? Like, yeah, sure. Well, Desert. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> I've never been there. I've only seen the photos of them replicating everything at the casinos. Yeah, when I was there, like, as, almost as soon as I was there, I was kind of like, you know, like, I don't think this is for me. But then, like, now that after I left, I was kind of like, you know, it'd be kind of fun to <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, I don't know. They're just so, it's just so like extravagant and so weird that there is like I think just the weird factor of it kind of is you know draws you back. And I would say the food scene is really great because there's all of like um, I mean if you're in Egypt, all like the different celebrity chefs mm. have like multiple mm-hmm. restaurants there each. So yeah. just like a lot of like if you you know grew up watching like food on television, then yeah. then there's just like so much cool stuff to see there. But uh, other than that, like. I don't know, I'm not into gambling or anything. Like, the casinos were all just like so like busy because they're, mm. they're like a maze, like on purpose. You just like walk in and you're just, just being assaulted by lights and popped it off. <laughs> and you're lost and you're like, oh, well, should I just play? Well, yeah. <laughs> you might as well play. Um, were they ripping up the main strip for the Formula One race when you were there? No, I was there in March. Uh, okay. so there was a lot of construction though, but yeah. like not like not a whole lot, but it was really annoying where like you'd be, you know, like on a corner of a street like this, but then you would have to like, it'd be constructed. So you'd have to like go into a casino to go in and they would have like bridges. So you'd have to like go into a casino to like cross a bridge into another casino to like get on the other side of the street. Yeah. Like it was pretty like crazy. I don't know. Yeah. But it's also like kind of interesting. It's like so wild that it just makes me like, you know, want to experience it again. And, like, I don't know. <laughs> Gets you hooked like gambling. Uh-huh. Uh, feels like you're in like the like 2000s. People are smoking at the airport, <laughs> in the casino. People are smoking, right, smoking like, in McDonald's. Like, you know, yeah, it's just like a <laughs> right, crowd of people and everything, and it just feels like you're in like the 2000s, like in or like 90s, like something, just mm. like you're in the past. Yeah. Uh, wow. Interesting. Uh-huh. Uh, that's that's how I thought. <laughs> I definitely just take photos of the neon signs. Oh yeah. Uh, at night, yeah. With um, Sinister Light Hundred. Yeah. Highly. It's definitely a film kind of like city, I think. Probably one of the best places to go for that other than Japan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Japan's so overstimulating with the lights. <laughs> you still, like, don't know where to look, even like the stores. You've been to Japan? Yeah, I lived there. Wow. Oh, really? yeah. Yeah. It's oh, my dream. Two years. Nice. Yeah. Were yeah. you like a photographer there? Or were you doing, like, for no, work? I was teaching English teaching there. Work, right. Yeah. Was like the easiest way to get it. Of course. <laughs> so everyone's like, oh, 
What do you do? <laughs> English teacher. Oh, I can't. <laughs> yeah, but they give you like, like three year visa pretty easily. So wow. Like, add it to your visa here. It's like, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> well, people are like fighting for it. So, right. Were you yeah. into photography though? Um, I was, but I was not in film yet. Like, I didn't like discover film that time. So, I really mm. kind of regret not doing film there because oh, it would yeah. just be so many things to shoot. And the, the camera stores are like humongous. They have like mm. floors and floors of them. And like, and the film's yeah. supposed to be cheaper there? Oh, uh, it's, it's about the same. They just have a lot of like ones that are only in Japan. Wow. So, you can't really get imports from because they're just so you know, rare, they only like locally or domestically have them there. So that'd be cool business. Mm. Import that stuff and sell it here. <laughs> Some people do that. <laughs> well, it's hard to get though. Like plus late like, import fees is still cost. Yeah. <laughs> Not doing anything illegal right here. Just, <laughs> just throwing no. out ideas. <laughs> no legal stuff. No, I mean business. <laughs> I think we have like a free trade agreement with Japan probably. Probably. Yeah. Could have been. Mm. I'm sure it would have been an issue just like fly over there, so come back with like a suitcase full of film fuel. From what I'm hearing, you know, that seems like a pretty lucrative fit. <laughs> I've never shot a film before, but you know what I've been saying. Yeah, just make sure you don't like have them go through the CT scan. Oh, because they will, uh, the yeah, the x ray will like mess up everything. So, how do you travel with the film? I usually just give them to the like, customers and then or the morning people and then they hand check it so they actually like take them out one by one and just kind of like swab it so make sure there's like no like liquids or anything in there and then they're like here so what you're saying is like, <laughs> you carry on yeah do you have any issues with that no because i i don't bring that many over like is it like i bring like 10 wall? as the most i did because mm-hmm. I'm so like foreign to film, like so. Sorry. Is it like when it's still in the raw, like yeah. undeveloped? Yeah. But when it's developed, is it fine? It's no. fine. It's, it's fine. fine. No. Is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I had no issues. Oh, okay. Yeah. So oh, it's yeah. undeveloped film. It can't go through. Anything. Yeah, because it's sensitive to light. Right. Right. When it's already like you developed yeah, it, yeah. not developed, but like you took a picture, so you expose it to light. Mm-hmm. So it it's not. Okay. Acceptable. And I didn't know that. I yeah. thought it like both times too, because it's still like have, the canister, and you still need to get it developed. Right? Mm, I had no issues with that. Mm-hmm. I had issues when it was so uh, I did not take a picture, did not expose it to light. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, had, I got stripes. Oh, okay. But like after, and I find it in the camera. It's fine too. Like when I put it in the camera and it just goes through with X-ray, um, nothing happens to it. But in the canister, <clears throat> but in the canister, if you're just like full out there, like there's nothing covering it. I think if you have like a blanket, yeah, that's still fine. Can we? Oh. Yeah, it's oh. just like right up there then. But like to avoid the hustle, I just buy film in the location where I travel to. Mm-hmm. So I travel to Toronto and I bought film there. Mm-hmm. So same, same price as cloud, like yeah, around. Right, yeah. Yeah, around. Yeah. But it saves me the hustle with that's all true. this like yeah. stuff. How many film rolls was the most you brought over? Uh, Four, mm-hmm. not so. that many. <laughs> Wait, so after you shoot with it, then it's okay, or yeah. do you still have to get it developed. You still have to get it developed. You still have to get you it have developed. Have to get yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you get it developed while well, you're still like in your destination, yeah, are you all done? Yeah, mm-hmm. so you get a scan and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the best way to do it, or really yeah. yeah. And everything's like mailed to you, like on your email. So, oh, yeah. so you just get the digital. Yeah. yeah. Did you edit it in Very little, very little. I mean, I ask for them to send me raw files, which is um, uh, negatives. Uh, So I need to use um, what I use the lab. hmm. What's the app? Negative lab? Yeah. Pro? Yeah, I guess that's Mm -hmm. the one. I forgot. (laughs) (laughs) And you you just convert it to positive. Yeah. And then after that, it just minor adjustments because it's like every film has its own flavor, yeah. and you kind of understand what film has what like what it has, and uh, it just like minor tweaks, and you're fine. This, yeah. this is the beauty of film, like you already shooting with the filter on, kind of, yeah. like talking with the more modern words. Yeah. But uh, it's it's like baked in, and it's like together with the whole 
essence of the picture, you know? So yeah. it's it's not on the picture, it's with, with the, the picture. picture. It, it is the picture. It is, it merges with the picture. Yeah. It's with the ISO, right? The film, it's already like set. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So they give you, for example, Fujifilm 400. 400. So that's why. So, yeah. 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 But so, yeah. You, you can overexpose, you can underexpose. Yeah, yeah. Like, obviously, There's, it's yeah. up to you. Yeah. Let me get one. Like this like is, a cheap one just to try it. Oh, yeah. no. This is so much fun. I should do a film, it. Um, photo walk or a film introduction. I would like to do. We have done a film, like I a film that. workshop <laughs> yeah. before. Yeah. So yeah, like that's, yeah, it was very popular. Mm -hmm. People were interested. Yeah, because some yeah. people, even seniors, are like mm -hmm. walking down the street. Time. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh, you, they still have film there? <laughs> so like like yeah. even that photo, photo shoot that we had, mm -hmm. like everyone heard the, mm -hmm. this is Phil? Okay, yep. <laughs> It's film. Yeah. The satisfying yeah. mechanical <laughs> shutter. <laughs> All yeah. The sounds. It's beautiful. Yeah. Someone actually brought a roller to one of the workshops. Oh, so, nice. Uh, the people have some really cool cameras. I really want to get one of those. That's <laughs> crazy when someone brings like a medium or large format. Yeah, a large format. Like, <laughs> logging it around. Like, <laughs> 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 Let's take yourself in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like the medium ones, I understand because like, you just have like a five yeah. Yeah. and you just like kind of do it from there. And, and like uh, they were, uh, one of the guys back in uh, Ottawa was telling me that like apparently there's like Instagram uh, accounts dedicated to just taking a photo with your phone through the uh, the hip mm -hmm. you find her so that like they aren't using film. Wait, what? Well, <laughs> I mean, kind of defeats the whole point. I guess like it's uh, saves money. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I've never but seen that. That's, <laughs> I don't know how popular it is, but it's <laughs> because like it's it's it action, should be illegal. So I need one mask on. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I <laughs> it's called <laughs> X. I've seen those videos, like, but. I think people actually take pictures like waste finder and they yeah, take in like a yeah, very cute video or reels on Instagram, but they better be shooting film. You know. <laughs> <laughs> like actually using the film camera, <laughs> not just <laughs> how much does it cost? Like if like at the most basic, if I wanted to just get like a basic film camera, you know, like buy a roll of film, get it developed, get maybe, you know, just like prints or the digital, whatever like my options are, like what would that cost like? Does add up. <laughs> it does up. It does add up. Yeah, think of it. <laughs> but think of it as like digital. You spend all your money oh at once, yeah. and then did, like film, you spend it in your totally. Yeah. But still, it's like it costs more. It could play more you shoot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so like, if you do the basic camera, maybe like fifty bucks. Fifty, yeah, you can. Yeah, 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 a yeah. decent one, yeah. and then uh, like a reusable one. And then a film roll, maybe if black and white, it's like 10 bucks. Yeah. And then color now is expensive. So it's like 20, 20, to, uh, 20 up to 30, 30 now. Because wow, Kodak cool. has like went up like price. Wow. Since Would you film is still pretty accessible? Yeah. And Lomo. And well. Lomo. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so add that plus uh, developing and scanning about like 25. If you have Ish. done. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like, yeah. you can say roughly 50 box for for an roll mm -hmm. like to to buy it to develop it and bucks. to get scanned and like how many photos usually on average 36 36, 36. 36. or in medium format it's like Whoa. 15 16 or yeah. if you get like a different Probably format like, then it's like 10 12. yeah like dollar 20 dollar 30 per photo something yeah like something that. like that really <laughs> <laughs> you, you can also buy like a half frame camera mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. makes uh like one picture. I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't think I want that though. Cause I mean, one thing that interested me in getting a film camera was because like my camera is a crop sensor. Yeah. And then I learned that like a 35 mil film camera. It's a full like, frame. Yeah. It's a full frame. So I was like, oh, that's, that'd be pretty cool to have a full frame camera for like 50 bucks yeah. or less. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. Like why? So that was like half frame. Okay. <laughs> I already have that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But half frame is good if you just want to like save money and shoot multiple frames. It's like you got like 72. Yeah. yeah, you got 72. And if you have like an artistic vision of certain, oh, um, because it's like one pic, one picture Dip and diptych, two yeah. diptych. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of very cool. Like yeah, you can tell a story with two pictures, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, it could yeah. be very, very interesting approach you know, to the photography. We'll one for, for alcove here and we'll do like a fun 
maybe one of the art meetups will do like a yeah. fun like oh like everyone can pair this up to take a photo like everyone mm. just takes a photo and pass it that'd be fun that would actually be really cool or just have a camera here uh -huh. anyone comes into all code to take a photo yeah and we get yeah. a developer yeah. and see everyone's different photos kind of like your like your collaborative uh -huh. when we were older so then you would just like if you wanted to separate it you would just crop it like, yeah yeah okay yeah, i mean cut it or oh. like just crop it in That's editing but you yeah do you understand that it's going to be like the frame it's almost square right yeah. So it's going to be like two vertical or yeah, horizontal. Yeah. So you have to know what what yeah. frame was before, you know, mm -hmm. to match the uh, or just cut it. Yeah, yeah. no, that's awesome. Yeah, actually, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. very fun. It, yeah, it's because they're so cheap. Like the film cameras, I could just have like a few spot here. You just go to the, random trip. Go to the camera yeah. store. They have yeah. free box. I got a free film camera. Really? My friend also, oh, Stephen, he also got one. <laughs> Pretty nice. yeah. I don't know what it was. I, was it the Minolta? His or mine? His. His was a Canon Rebel T something. TG something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mine was Minolta. It's mm. pretty good. Or Olympus. Olympus OM10. Yeah. Yeah, and it works so far. I haven't developed it yet, but it, the light meter is broken, but so it, it takes a shiver. Yeah. <laughs> Sunny 16 room. Yeah, I've been yeah. just doing that. Hopefully, nothing. <laughs> yeah, everything is fine. <laughs> That's the thing with filming. It's like, oh, everything's fine, even though it's like shit and like, you know, everything's blown up. But no, like, that's the <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's acceptance of like chaos. Okay. Yeah, well, there's me like taking 500 photos on a bike ride and just like, yeah, 400 of them <laughs> immediately because they miss focus or whatever. I need to get better at that. There's literally no penalty for me to take that many photos. Yeah. Interesting thing about the film, I was thinking about just today that it's at the same time it's very forgiving mm -hmm. and at the same time not forgiving at all. Mm -hmm. So it's a right. very weird combination. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't know what will you get. Mm -hmm. I mean you kind of should know, but at the same time there is you can't be certain. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be yeah. like blown up and looks amazing. And someone's like blown up and just horrible. Like, who are you? Like, why? <laughs> yeah, that's that's the beauty. It's just a, it's like a, a surprise bag. You yes. never get a kit, Christmas. even though if you're following all the rules, it's just like what happened to it. Yeah. Sometimes you're like, oh, it's pretty nice on a mistake, like a light leak or something. I remember I was overexposed by mistake mm -hmm. and I get very good photos. I'm like, mm -hmm. but I was overexposed. Yeah. So like film is very forgiving in that in that case. Mm -hmm. Not all of it. Mm -hmm. Like Kodak is very forgiving. Yeah. If you're over overexposing or underexposing. Mm -hmm. But like Fuji is not very <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you mess up, you're just kind of screwed. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta work with it. You see the green tones in your photo, you, you just Nope. Yeah. It's no <laughs> good. Either green or yellow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the slider can only fix so much. Yeah. Well, let's talk about digital film, guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, digital film is digital film. <laughs> I actually saw this um, this reel before I came to Calgary. It was like, you know the uh, the point and shoot cameras, the like the the disposable ones. So like essentially, you just disassemble one of those. You take the little lens out of it, and then you put it into a lens like oh, power like, yeah. for your that crystal or yeah. something. Yeah. And then you can get similar looking photos. Like they're oh. just like just as green. plastic through the plastic. <laughs> yeah, the plastic. <laughs> I still haven't successfully attached it yet, but it's been on my to do list for a while because it gives you like kind of the, the a similar look, but it's the digital file instead. You, know, you don't have to keep on buying. Since are expensive. Yeah. I actually got just bought it for a birthday, went through it, and then uh, saw the gun developed it sitting in Ontario in my girlfriend's parents' basement because I had to store some of the stuff there. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe I'll do that over Thanksgiving. Go to, Definitely. I'll get it developed. Yeah, go does for it. Does that go bad? It does if you're not stored properly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a good chance it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it has an expiry date. So, but I think just, when you expose it to light, it's fine. No, it also, if it's like too humid, too humid like it okay. will cause condensation and it'll make sense. Like, it will ruin the film. It's buried in a box, 
I don't think it's that much chance of compensation. It's good to zoom in the basement because they like it's dark and dark. Yeah. It's like a new book. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, <Okay>. they, yeah. <laughs> It will grow like that, but it will. Uh, it's bad. In, it, it's bad in humidity and um, hot situations. So they don't suggest you to put it in the in the fridge because but even it that can, longer. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, even that can add some special effect to your photos. Yeah. So yeah, definitely, definitely it develop it. Yeah, we'll see what comes out. I'll, uh, I'll make sure to send you guys this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Love to see it. I am excited. I don't know why. <laughs> So well, like you said, it's like Christmas every single yes. time you develop your role. And it's your Christmas present. Yeah. And I still want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's yeah, also I like, like digital photography because you can take as many photos as you want. It doesn't cost you anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I guess I'm actually aware of your shutter, but I don't know. It's an insanely high number nowadays. I imagine. Yeah. I'm still not familiar with the technical side of like the actual work and work. And so can't, like, I know how it works, but yeah. I don't know like, how many shutter counts you get. No. Some magic to me <laughs> how a camera works. Like I don't understand it. I don't want to understand it. <laughs> I, I mean, some, sometimes you just read about it. and I'm like, yeah. nah. Like how it's, do you get? It's like, a wizard image or something like, onto my screen, and then you know, like I just don't get it. Well, it's just like it seems like cameras having two native ISOs on it. Mm -hmm. That just blows my mind. That like two what? Like you have two levels of ISO that gives you the least amount of noise in your photos for some like depending on the camera. So, like for the A6400, it's ISO 100, ISO 400. Okay. For some reason, it's just like in between those. But, like, so what happened when you shoot 200? For example, you, you got noise, more noise than technically you would have more noise, than more, more noise. But, than like, but if your photos are properly exposed in the first place, then you don't really get noise no matter what, really, unless you're like in super low light settings, then you're mm -hmm. like playing around with the sliders like crazy. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, because like, uh, yeah, technically at ISO 32, 320, I'd have more noise than 400 on my specific camera body. Oh, wow. Weird. That is yeah, really strange. I started, <laughs> I started reading about ISO and variants, and then I was like, this is too deep. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I should just enjoy taking photos. I don't need to get all technical and nitty gritty about it. Yeah. Boost your ISO as much as you want. Denoising is crazy nowadays, anyways. Mm. Yeah. Just enjoy the process. Not necessarily think, oh, that won't look good because there's noise in it. Yeah, that's true. And people put noise right now mm. because of the the vintage look, yeah. film look, film. you know. Yeah, I do. I do tech, uh, tend to add green into my photos, mm. uh, but I just like that it kind of like balances things out. But it's not perfect because, like, even like like the new cameras that are coming out now are just like it's great that you nail the shot every single time, but. It kind of gets to the point where it's like the camera's doing everything for you, which is great for like, I don't know. That, it's like a catch point too, because like it's great. It gets more people into it. Like there's more people, photography in the world, but you lose some of the process where it's like trial and error. You have to learn it yourself. Yeah. You make all your mistakes and then from that, you kind of build up a knowledge base. But now it's just like the AI chips, that just quote unquote AI, AK, okay, they just have more processing power to one specific part of the camera and they're calling it AI. <laughs> in my opinion, um, I don't think it's true AI yet, but it's just oh, it's great. It's also, I don't know, I really can conflict, conflict it on that point. <laughs> if you can't tell, <laughs> like, I think, like, honestly, like, I want the A6700 because me, I'm on a bike shooting when I'm going 50 kilometers an hour down a hill. Yeah. It's great to have the AI like processing because it'll be able to detect the subject a lot better than the 6400 right now, which is great for me in that specific use case. But I like making mistakes and being able to like look at my photography and be like, oh, yes. mm. I know what went wrong there. Mm. Like I should have had a different shutter speed or like. Do you always know how to fix it or are you just like coming up with the solution afterwards? Like, like are you talking like in the moment or like when I'm reviewing it? One you reviewing it. When I review it, yeah, it's, it's very easy to be like, oh, I should have done this in this case. And then like you kind of need to learn from it and do it the next time. But yeah, like shooting F8 on the green shoots a change your aperture and trying to do night photography is not great. <laughs> that was one of my earlier mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys hear about Topaz AR? Yeah. 
or like mm-hmm. AI mm-hmm. retoucher or whatever. So no. It's like yeah. if you have a photo that's not in focus, they can use the software and just make it sharp like and bring it back <laughs> into focus. So my photos, all my photos, when I went to Vegas, I went to Grand Canyon. Almost all my photos at Grand Canyon are like out of focus. So what like happened? There. Just like, you know, my. I had like a manual, manual oh, lenses and yeah. just like it was like low light conditions and I was just like overly excited. And then I hate how like LCD screen, I find like the photos always look so much nicer yeah. on my camera and then I look on my computer and I'm like, why does this look like shit? <laughs> it looks so good on my camera. <laughs> See, I have the opposite program because so many LCDs are shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, you know, look at it in your camera and you're like, uh, I don't know, even on the camera if they're on your computer it's like, Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, often, uh, yeah. I find it so often where yeah, I don't know, it's like such a discrepancy sometimes I find from what I see on the screen versus what do you shoot with? Uh Fuji film X X Fuji. Oh great, right? yeah. yeah. You find the same thing if you zoom in as well. I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you know. Yeah. Because yeah. I find like I have to zoom in to make sure it's in focus. Because like when I'm out and I took the yeah, photo, true, yeah. I'm like, oh. It's, it's so, so small, yeah. in, like focus, and I zoom in. I'm like, wait a minute, it's not in mm-hmm. focus at all. Especially people who wear glasses, you know, because mm. because this could be a problem. I used to have a manual focus as well, and I missed my focus like eighty percent of the shots mm. because I think it's in focus, mm-hmm. but not really. And you like, mm. <sighs> yeah. So I got better glasses. <laughs> <laughs> <That helps. laughs> Yeah, I wear contacts too, so it helps me to like because there's an extra glass in the way. So Wait, I, like you wear both. Both. No, no. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you can glasses. see the rings of the Saturn. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah, I mean, like right glasses. Yeah. <laughs> telescope. <please. laughs> Zooming in. But yeah, no, I wear contacts when I'm shooting, like when I want doing gigs because like the glasses sometimes go get in the way oh, and yeah. then also it leaves like a little bit of like condensation or like smudges on the lcd screen yeah. so like just having the contacts and a lot because you're closer up to the viewfinder. and sometimes even like changing the like the angle mm-hmm. could affect the focus how you see it so oh, yeah. Yeah, true. i also don't know why you guys were in focus with my glasses so might be seeing some off focusing on my photos. <laughs> like, well, one of my arms were bent before, and it like my it made my vision blurry for a little while because I have to keep straightening my yeah <laughs> my glasses. Yeah, that makes like, sense. I went to the optometrist for, recently, and I haven't gone in like six years. <laughs> so I I went in and like my prescription went from negative five and a quarter to like negative six and a half. So like I'm so blind without like contacts in, but yeah, I could definitely see yeah. that. Affecting photography, well, not so much digital because like the camera's doing a lot of work for you, but like if you're doing manual lenses. We actually, I, I had an idea. We talked about it mm-hmm. for for a very little, like to make a project of how people without glasses see the world, mm-hmm. and, like give them the camera, yeah. the manual focus, and just ask them to take a picture of anything, and like add the description, like what kind of sight they have. Mm-hmm. So that's um I'm I'm still thinking about it and I we still think we should definitely yeah. do that. And we should patent that. Miss in front of me is that a photo? <laughs> that, that, that's too. There's a lot of people walking down the street here doing traffic with the <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, make a zine from it. Just yeah. like this is the how how we see the world. How we see the world. Yeah. And the, like picture was like this. <laughs> <laughs> from like 2020 vision to the worst possible vision. <laughs> <laughs> to a blind photographer so that that's my idea whoever listens to it this is my take it. Don't take it. <laughs> it's already in the works so yep. you're too late already working <laughs> copyrighted <laughs> it would be so sad if you actually make millions on that yeah and I would like brother <laughs> I don't think that's what I would be surprised <laughs> is trying to make money off of it. Like, I know you can't monetize it. Do you want to? What stops you? Because <laughs> then it goes from a hobby to a job. And, like, I don't know if I want to make that jump. Whereas, like, right now, I do it for fun. I do it to relax. I like editing, like, 
process. I don't like having a deadline for that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how I'd fare. Like, I'm sure I can do it. Definitely, if like I retired, I don't know. Not Geo, it's even around. <laughs> Laid off all the photographers, anyways, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Not, oh no, they got rid of the print. I think they got rid of the print. Oh, oh really? Oh, really? That's sad. I hear they're not really paid very well. Either. No, you just go sit in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> like Arctic conditions, yeah. to get one photo. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, I don't know. You should just try it and then see how you feel about it. Yeah, if I did that though, I want to like do it properly, like get a numbered company, set it up, start running off cameras and stuff, because mm-hmm. I'd be like a good thing to look at to buy new equipment and not necessarily. Pay full, full for it. Yeah. Something that's technically a loss in the company, but I think you could do that as a sole proprietor. Probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't honestly I haven't looked into it. You can write it off as a part of your income. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's yeah. It's your practical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wonder what the threshold for clients have to do before you can start writing off of the taxes. Do not condone the tax evasion. <laughs> Get out of there. Do as little as you can. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I guess we are in Alberta. <laughs> Bit of a different Labs in Alberta. Yeah. No, we don't like tax. <laughs> Nobody likes tax. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm so glad there's low taxes here. <laughs> you're you're also from Ontario. Yeah, and where are you from? Ukraine. Ukraine. No oh. taxes either. Not really. Mm. Not really. Um, but I mean, the country is not rich. I mean, it's rich, but at the same time, other people make it not rich. Mm. Let's mm. say that corruption and all that, mm. which is sad. Yeah. And like well, when I hear other people complaining about corruption, I'm like, you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea what corruption is. <laughs> but it's a beautiful country and uh, and amazing people. And um, I always wanted to live somewhere abroad, so I spent one year living in Sweden. Um, mm-hmm. But I was working with uh, Syrian and Afghanistan. Uh, from uh, I was working with. Um, refugees from Syria and Afghanistan mm-hmm. uh, for one year. So it was like a, I don't know, it was like a ministry slash work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like volunteer work, yeah. mostly. Uh, but I came back home still. And then I moved to <laughs> Canada like a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, I missed my home. Actually, I did not expect that. Mm-hmm. No. It was like, I mean, I all, I all, I know all the minuses of my country, mm-hmm. but I do miss people, and mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, Canadians have different mentality. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's bad or good; it's different. Mm-hmm. You just have to get used to it. The people here are more like smiley, friendly, but they uh, they don't want to be friends with you. That's what I <laughs> felt. <laughs> Um, when in Ukraine, when they are not smiley, they're like, like always sad, but at the same time, you can be, you, you can become with someone with best friends in, in a day too. Yeah. That's what happened with my best friends. Like we hung out once mm. and after that, we just, and I hung out with a lot of people <laughs> since mm. I moved to Canada and no one kind of like sticks mm. because, yeah. Different reasons, I guess. So, but it's it is different. It's completely different. But I I still enjoy my time here. Yeah, I think you have to like take a longer time to like connect with people here. Yeah, yeah, that's what seems to be the thing. In the different culture. Yeah, and and again, it's probably the like Calgary thing also mm-hmm. because even you said it's hard to make friends mm-hmm. in Calgary. I was arguing that's like any big city in North America, really. Because, like, unless you know, like, exactly what your hobbies are and, like, you are set in them and you're, like, kind of confident in yourself about them, moving to a new place is kind of it's crazy because you just get so closed in. Like, I don't know if it's the individualism of, like, North America. Is that, like, what you find? Like, it's just yeah. more like that in sort of like a community based kind of thing? 
and, and also like you're moving to a new city and everyone around you already has their own their own life you know friends family girlfriends boyfriends whatever and you're just trying to get into their life when they are not actually looking for anyone else yeah you know and i understand that and it's completely fine this is understandable but like sometimes i do feel sad <laughs> yeah about that that I, you just just can't call someone and just let's go hang out they're like no we need to make plans mm. let's do this next week mm. while like in ukraine it's just like a matter of 40 minutes and people are in your place hanging out and eating pizza and enjoying the movie yeah that sounds great so yeah that's yeah. <laughs> that that's the thing that i miss the most so I like when I, when I was living I was living alone in Ukraine and um I like to be alone and by myself and I thought that I would enjoy loneliness and solitude here in Canada but I understood that it's a different kind of solitude when you have the options mm-hmm. of bringing people to your place in like a matter of, of an hour mm-hmm. and here there is no possibility of doing that so yeah, I kind of like, as to like I'm like what that hits hard yeah. <laughs> very really philosophical <laughs> <laughs> but again that sometimes I just um, went uh, sometimes I just go for a walk with my camera yeah. and I have the like amazing interactions with different people uh, I was uh, standing on a crossroad waiting to, to cross the road and uh, I just saw the beautiful light on the building. So I took a picture and dude was standing right next to me. He's like, can I see the picture? And I'm like, uh, no. He's like, like, why not? <laughs> I almost defended. I'm like, I'm shooting film, dude. I'm shooting film. Like, not today. Maybe later. He's like, oh, I understand that. And we, we had a good laugh about it and just wished a great evening to each other and just part ways but that was fun and a lot of things happened like that so photography kind of helped me to um to fight it the, yeah. the, the solitude it is a very good icebreaker for strangers it's like mm-hmm. especially if you have an interesting camera go like object Ooh, what is that and start a conversation and people are like are, are you a tourist i'm like no <laughs> I'm, i live here like but do you have an accent like I'm from Ukraine. Oh, I'm from Ontario. <laughs> I was like, that's not the, oh yeah. Well, yeah stuff is about Calgary. No one's from Calgary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, like, Ontario. Like specifically Toronto or Vancouver is yeah. essentially where like most of the people I've met are from. Or New Zealand or Australia. And Austra- yeah, a lot of people from Australia. Like what really? what's up with that? Yeah, it's a work. Yeah. Work yeah. holiday. Yeah. Like, so like oh, they go to the mountains. Yeah. Yeah, they do opposite seasons. So, like, we'll work in New Zealand for like their winter, which is like we're in like the transition period. Oh, wow. And then they come to Canada and work in like Whistler Camp, oh. all those places. So, it's uh, it's like a, it's from a Commonwealth, really. It's just like still sticking together. Right? <laughs> like, That's pretty these. cool. But yeah, so like um, some people will do like summer in Canada. Like, I know a lot of my, like, some of my friends have done that where we'll do like, We'll hike the mountains and stuff yeah. here. They'll work out in like, uh, like mountain towns, then uh, they'll go down to Australia and do the same thing. Like this bartender or hostess or whatever. It's a cool program. I wish I could have taken advantage of it. But are there like certain restrictions? No, you can still do it. I'm pretty sure at any age. It's just right now. 35. Is it 35? I think so. Canadians mm-hmm. who's working all day. Mm-hmm. Not too long, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so seven years, but still. Not very much about photography, though. We talked about everything. <laughs> <Like, laughs> yeah, I was just saying about, like, you know, how for you, like, photography kind of, like, gave you this thing where, like, you can kind of have fun by yourself. But then I think it's also kind of, like, you have to be careful that that could become a trap where you're, like, because photography, you could just go your whole life and just kind yeah. of just be on your own the whole time and still have fun. Yeah. But then I think it's important to like find groups like this and like even like what Maid does with Instagram just so that you can really use photography then like as come for the opposite purpose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As then now you can use it to make friends and like for that social. That's what social. I use it for. I'm too much of an introvert to actually make 
friends. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't know how to socialize with people who have no interest in photography. <laughs> <laughs> I still have music. I can I can talk to people about that. Yeah. Um, and I did some art, but it was just like I was just painting stuff that was in my head. Mm. So nothing serious. So I'm I'm trying to broad out <laughs> <laughs> the areas. Do you find photographers are more introverted or extroverted, or do you find like a difference in profession and like how introverted someone is? I find that a lot are very extroverted because mm. they're able to like be like have like a great conversation with the model like they will be like hey, yeah. let's do that like this that that and i have like a million ideas and like spinning it out and then i'm sitting there and i'm like i don't want to talk to you <laughs> <laughs> that's a different kind there's so many different kinds of photographers yeah, yeah those are almost more like commercial portrait mm-hmm. i think photographers but i find like the photographers i kind of meet the ones that are more interested in the street it's like those are the ones that like introverts who want to be extroverts mm-hmm. yeah where like they are actually introverted but they want to be like talking to people, yeah. they want to be out there, they want to be experiencing these things. And photography is just kind of one of those ways that like, gets them out. At least like I think that's kind of a bit for me. Mm. Where it just encourages because normally like like you know, I do like going on random walks, but I'm gonna be much more interested if there's kind of purpose. Mm-hmm. Whereas like, oh I come with a camera and then like and then those types of walks, if I walk the same route with without a camera, like I'm gonna be way more engaged and have a lot of different experiences with a camera, like with the intention of like I'm gonna go take photos. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> cameras are fun. Everyone should do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I'm thinking like I'm more introverted, but I like talking to people mm-hmm. and engaging with people. But I do get like batteries, you know, depleted after yeah. of, like a big hangover with lots of people. I'm still like questioning the whole concept of being introverted and extroverted because i can be very introverted with some people mm. but at the same time with the people that i feel comfortable with I'm super extroverted i'm like and so so people have different image of me mm. like oh, yeah. and it's so weird like i know myself mm. and they both describe me and this is none of me that's not a good like, way to, i mean i think it's just a very like general super general description of people yeah and, like you mm-hmm. said people can be both in different situations mm-hmm. so then just kind of general like what's your kind of average i guess mm-hmm. is what people are talking about i guess extroverted mm-hmm. and like uh, actually i was switching one live performance on npr tiny desk mm-hmm. um and there was one pianist and she was very quiet and shy while she was talking. But when she was performing, mm-hmm. it was a completely different person. Mm-hmm. So this is also a thing about any kind of art. Yeah. I mean, you could be, um, there's also the musician, the tallest man on earth. When he gives interview, those are the worst interviews ever. But when he sings, this is like incredible. Mm-hmm. Like, amazing so art gives you like this way out of your i don't know maybe who you who you really are Mm -hmm. if you're not restrained by some social um stigmas and you know how i found that's like like that makes me think of aaron sorkin like the the movie writer he's famous for writing like the best dialogue in movies but then I watched him like in a master class and he's like a bumbling talker. Like he just talks like bumbling and like he's not a very good speaker, but his writing is known for being like the best dialogue mm. ever. And so I think it's like, it has, it, it, like he can't express himself fully through his voice. Yeah. He's got to do it through his writing. And mm. I, I think that is the beauty of art. Like it really gives you those different avenues. Yeah. Makes sense. I just recalled myself performing years ago and it's like, I'm super extroverted on stage. Like I'm talking mm-hmm. to people, engaging them in songs, even if they don't know the songs. So, um, yeah, that, that's fun. Art gives you the way to. Makes you feel comfortable enough oh, yeah. to be showing your true self in a way or a different side of you, I guess, mm-hmm. which is really interesting. And important. Important, yeah. So Mentally, sh- it's very good for you. 
should everyone should do art, any kind of art. You in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes the plug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think we should wrap it up. Okay. Do you, have uh, like do you guys have any uh, things you want to add? Just go and shoot film. That's <laughs> that's what I want to add. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, I think it's a good time to be a photographer in Calgary. Like I think it, you know, Calgary is has always been a good place for photographers, but for like different types, I think. I think before it was much more like landscape and like wildlife was, has always been a really big thing here. But I think for people, younger people trying to get into it, um, especially like gear is a lot more accessible now too. So I think it's just like the best thing to become one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So many different mediums, so many different social medias too. Yeah, too many. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Vine. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best one. Yeah. Didn't even have photos. <laughs> <laughs> you just thing. thought about social media? Fine. <laughs> it's a silly video. So that was only five seconds. Five right? seconds or ten seconds? Seven. Seven. Seven? Seven. Okay. Oh, okay. That's such a... That was beautiful. <laughs> was beautiful a beautiful time. Yeah, we just bring it back. I'm sure it's not. <laughs> it's because Twitter runs it. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. well, Couldn't it just sound like a six or eight second version? Oh, they're going to sue us. <laughs> yeah, TikTok's going to come out of yeah, <laughs> Billions and billions of dollars. And Instagram will be all pissy. I mean, is there anywhere online that you guys post photos except Instagram? I have a website. I have an online mm, website. I'm thinking about doing that as well. Weird. Like, I really should not do it. No. But I don't know. Think about you, man. I have a portfolio. Yeah. So I post all my stuff there. In terms of like getting trying to get more gigs, so when you like social, like any website that's like not like your personal website, but like somewhere where it's like yeah, another like, social media, yeah, where it's like a sharing a sharing platform. Um, I I started using Threads like mm -hmm. a month ago when it first came out, um, uh -huh. and I tried it. It was okay. Like it, they don't compress the photos at all. Yeah, that's and then they, beautiful. The videos too is all like not compressed, but not enough people go on it. I think to get new enough engagement. It's kind of yeah. stupid that Threads doesn't compress it, but Instagram does. Yeah, because it's the same company, right. so I don't know. The <laughs> photo app it's not photo app anymore. I know. Like, that's that's what I'm asking like, what do people use? They now? are suppressing like, photographers use? hard. Yeah, uh -huh. I use Vero as well. Oh, I heard of that one. Yeah. I have Wow. Yeah, because I think Instagram was something like over the years that kind of discouraged me from becoming a photographer because it's always the same type of photos and it's always like yeah, expensive gear and it's like mm. it's all about the likes and then you're just like oh like if that's what it takes to become a photographer is where like Instagram where you just do the same thing then that, that just didn't sound appealing to me yeah. but I don't think there is really another platform that has been that has that same amount of significance yeah. like a photo sharing platform nope. mm. oh, I've yeah. tried like Guru Shots or something but I don't like it it's kind of weird None of them has the like the follower base as Instagram does. Yeah. So. Yeah. Flickr is like Facebook. Yeah, I was gonna say Flickr is there. Well, like there is a good community. I heard, but I just don't use it anymore. Yeah, but it's it's you know people our age are still using Instagram. Like, I think it's a good way still to connect and find people because everyone's using it. Almost. That's how I find you. So yeah. the core issue. Most of my photos are. Oh, that's why I just put the. Yeah, yeah, why because yeah. it compresses or just cuts the his portraits or something. And it kinda looks neat when every <laughs> everything is like that. Smaller. Yeah, <laughs> true that. It's small. Like, I don't know. It's... Do the, the square. Yeah. The no, I just don't medium format. <laughs> like there's just no other option. Yeah, there is like no, not yet at least. Uh -huh. So we just need to wait for Yeah. <laughs> 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 the problem is it's everything's about money now, so like no one's gonna make it. Oh, we won't make money. That's the intention. <laughs> going up immediately against Instagram, which is even though it's a Instagram <laughs> yeah. is where they get most of their traffic nowadays. It's true. But it's still you have to sponsor all the ads. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, 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 getting, like, <laughs> just start listening to everyone. Just become Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Sometimes even your followers they don't see your posts. Because of how Instagram works. Yeah, nowadays. the algorithm. Yeah. 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 yeah it's like and you're like getting new. 30 likes and look. Like, Before it was like 100. Like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm so bad. 
But you're not though, no. you know? Well, like when I, oh geez, like when I first started, like when I was on Instagram, like you're, like this is when it first started and everyone was using it because it was new. You're, you're and they were taking picture. pictures of food. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you had like those stupid, like the really bad filters. Yeah, the on. ring ones. Like, no your gaming ratio was like 80% easily. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe like on my personal Instagram, I'm lucky to get like over 100 likes now, but like, I don't care. Like, I guess, like, as I got older, I don't really care about it as yeah. much. But, like, in high school, you're just like, this is my popularity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and my popularity is determined by this. And I'm, like, a nerdy little, like, shy, <laughs> introverted, like, computer science kid. And I, um, <laughs> Dude, with kids today, I had so much worse. Oh, I know. Like, right? Yeah, because yeah, we're about the same age. Yeah. Right? I think it's more like high school. It's, like, new, new, these are new things. But, yeah, like, like, kids they're born into like, it. It's already, yeah, they're born That's into their expectation. Things. Like, they grew up with filters. Like that, uh, that would uh, destroy anyone. Some, some of them are grown up with photos of them already online from when they were a baby. Yeah, that's right? true. Like we don't yeah, necessarily no have that. <laughs> but like, yeah, a lot of kids today who are like 18, some of them have photos from when they're like one, two, three, four, five yeah. on their Facebook and just their entire life online. Like it's insane. I have them printed like on the like from the film, like the the way it's yeah, supposed yeah, to like be. Photo albums, yeah, yeah, photo albums yeah. and all that. Actually, I bought a few photo albums here because I've been taking lots of photos. So I want to like take it back. Like you know, I have fucking Instagram. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I definitely printed out some of my photos from university and stuff. And like, I tried to keep that going because like I went through all the old photos that were of me. So like, I have like all the old where they four by sixes or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, like just all the prints. So mm-hmm. like, I have my nine eleven little photo books. Yeah, just like, awesome. been doing that. Love so that. like, I really need to like I need to. We should do the print trade, a print trade here. Yeah. Yeah. We're having one soon, right? Uh, I canceled it and then postponed it to October. Okay. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, because no one can make Cochrane, because <laughs> it was only like Raphael and me, and then Ian, because it was his place. So I was like, um, <laughs> yeah, so... I couldn't make it if someone can give me a ride, but like, yeah, obviously yeah, I not. feel like it's not worth it to. Push people up there. But he so. has a dark room. He had a he has a studio in his basement. He has a dark room. He was like, you, you can print pictures in my home. Yeah, he can Isn't teach us awesome? sinotype oh, cool. and stuff. He yeah. likes doing sinotype, so maybe he can talk to you too. Like he's yeah. pretty. Um, he's a senior, but he's very experienced. Oh, cool. He would really be into. He's really good yeah. with his portraits. And stuff. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, we can do it. I'll swap here. Be cool. Definitely get more people to like, print their. You know, yeah. Photos because people are like, How do you even print photos? Like, oh, you just go to this place. And they're like, yeah, Oh, I never printed my photos. Yeah, like, <laughs> explain ICC profiles to people and like make sure that the color correction is right. Because, yeah. like, I found out that the London, London Drugs does have ICC profiles for their newspaper. Oh, okay. So, like, I was like comparing mine. I did print off some because I was giving like some prints of uh, my friend's cats to him for his birthday. <laughs> 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 no, that's, that's a good idea. I have some. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm not a bottle of alcohol or thoughtfulness <laughs> you're gonna have a drink after and <laughs> so it's like there's like there's just like two really good photos here to show you guys. Well frame photos is just I'm gonna yeah, send like point that just having cause... that like your art like anyone's art, even art group, that's why I wanted to do the swap is like you have a piece of art by another photographer in your home. Yeah. And you can have it framed, you can have it, you know, hanging mm-hmm. around. It's just like really cool. I never printed my photos before. So hmm. yeah. Time now's the time. It's not, it's not <laughs> sure. Which one do you recommend? Shoppers, London Drugs or Walmart? Who's the best? I don't um, I don't know. The shoppers do it? I think Shoppers does it too. Not all of the stores. Not all of them. They have the little small kiosk, right? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. So oh, we're looking yeah, at a beautiful that's worth picture printing. of a cat. That's, that's worth printing. That's Another really picture of a cat. Yeah. <laughs> I need a picture of me at the top of the mountain for Christmas. Your Tinder? No. <laughs> <laughs> he has a girlfriend. <laughs> no, I need to. Oh God. So those photos are far. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been joking with my friends because, like, every year I do like this uh, Christmas cheer ride. I've been doing it for three years now, where I ride around. Like, I rode around Ottawa. Like, it was like negative forty and some or negative thirty in some cases. But like, I do hundred kilometers in a bloody wheel costume. Oh my God. <laughs> so I'm like, I can just get a picture of me in a bloody wheel costume top of the map and then make that my Christmas card because that'd be yeah. hilarious. <laughs> do it. But I need to get the I need to get the costume here and I can 
which you can do those things here. Yeah, <laughs> the mountain part's easy. It's just getting the costume here because I forgot it. No, mm-hmm. not a lot. Not a lot. We look forward to those Christmas cards. No, oh, it's going on <laughs> social media once I take that photo. It's hilarious. But yeah, to answer your question, I think London Drugs does a pretty decent job Good with job, like yeah. prints, and they're not too expensive. Mm-hmm. They can do eight by ten. It's like maybe seven bucks. Okay. Yeah, it's like thirty cents for the four by six. Yeah. Something. Something. Yeah. Denver fifty. It's like twenty five. I've never done Walmart. I Some think people like cheaper, to. But yeah. But quality might differ. Right? I think they can only do smaller ones like postcard size or like five, four by sixes. Okay. I'm not yeah. too sure. Yeah, I think London Drugs is more like variety. Because they have an yeah, actual lab yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. They, can also, they, they can also develop and scan yes. your film. Mm-hmm. But I heard mixed reviews. Yeah, someone told me who used to work there that don't uh, go to them for like work stuff because sometimes you get scratches on them. They're not as careful mm-hmm. with oh, like yeah. their negatives. So yeah, it's mixed. Yeah, there's Walmart as well, and there's Staples. Staples is okay, just the cheaper side. Walmart, I haven't tried. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, well, yeah, work nice with me. Well, thank you guys for yeah. Yeah, the this photography with friends and. Flew by. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. We ended up uh, bashing Instagram at the end, so that's uh, <laughs> perfect <laughs> ending. To do. No, sponsor us. Because yeah. <laughs> we also bashed them in another, the previous episode. Of really? So we're like, oh, Instagram, don't uh, cancel us. But <laughs> this is going to be the thing of this <laughs> podcast. That's the social media company that really needs to be bashed. Right? All of your bash. Yeah. Twitter. X. Right. <laughs> 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 Dislike you. <laughs> I want to get his new biography just because the guy who wrote it is a really good biography. That'd be interesting. He's excellent. Mind of a crazy person. Yeah. He's just never been told no in his life. Mm. <laughs> He's off the rails at this point, I think. Yeah, I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he always was or. He's still on a cyber track. Yeah. That, Bye. that was cool. <laughs> Bye, Twitter. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so that was episode three. Thanks everyone for watching and also listening to us ramble. Um, thanks to Eric, Alex, and Dennis uh, for participating and agreeing to this shenanigans and chaos that we've talked about. Um, bashing Instagram and Twitter and whatnot. And it's a lot of fun. And I'll leave a link for the alcove down in the description, as well as uh, Alex's music. He has some on his uh, stories and then his highlights on Instagram. Uh, be sure to check it out. His websites and uh, song playlists are not ready yet. So in the meantime, give him a listen, send some nice comments. Again, thank you everyone for listening. And don't forget to share this with your friends, family, neighbors, people on the streets, and I'll see you on the other side. Stay colorful. Bye.